The next theorem shows us that we do not need to worry about complex eigenvalues when we're working with symmetric matrices with real entries. So to help us prepare for this theorem, let's do a quick review of complex conjugates. Recall that the complex conjugate of a complex number, z is equal to a plus bi, is the number z bar being equal to a minus bi. Now, to show that z is real, we need to show that b is equal to zero. Now, there are multiple ways in which we could go about this. One such way is to show that our complex number z is equal to the complex conjugate. So we know our complex number is defined as a plus bi, and we set this equal to the complex conjugate a minus bi. So we can see those a's canceling each other right out, leaving us with bi is equal to minus bi, or in other words, 2bi is equal to zero, and dividing both sides by two times that imaginary number, we are left with b is equal to zero. Woohoo! So therefore, we have verified that z is real. Now, the concept of complex conjugates can be naturally extended to vectors and matrices. For example, we can define matrix A bar to be the matrix whose entries are the complex conjugates of the entries of matrix A. In other words, if matrix A is defined by the ith jth entry, then the complex conjugate of matrix A is the matrix defined by the complex conjugate of the ith jth entry. So let's take this idea and now explore our next theorem. So here is our next theorem. We have that if matrix A is a real symmetric matrix, then the eigenvalues of matrix A are real. So let's go ahead and verify that this statement is in fact true. We want to let A be a real symmetric matrix. And let's go ahead and suppose that lambda is an eigenvalue of matrix A with corresponding eigenvector V. Then by definition, we have matrix A times vector V is equal to lambda times vector V, our eigenvalue equation. So taking this eigenvalue equation and taking the complex conjugate of this, we can simplify this equation and notice that since matrix A is real, we're left with the equation matrix A times the complex conjugate of vector V is equal to the complex conjugate of lambda multiplied by the complex conjugate of vector V. Now, taking the transpose of this equation and simplifying by the properties of the transpose, we're able to observe that since matrix A is a symmetric matrix, and since lambda is a scalar, we're left with the transpose of the complex conjugate of vector V times matrix A is equal to the complex conjugate of lambda times the transpose of the complex conjugate of vector V. Now, right-hand multiplying this equation by vector V, we can reorder the terms on both sides of the equation and then observe on the left-hand side that we can replace matrix A times vector V with lambda times vector V. And since lambda is a scalar, we can pull lambda out on the left-hand side, leaving us with lambda times the transpose of the complex conjugate of V times vector V is equal to the complex conjugate of lambda multiplied by that same product. So bringing all of these terms to the left-hand side and then factoring our scalars to the front, we're left with lambda minus the complex conjugate of lambda multiplied by the transpose of the complex conjugate of vector v times vector v is equal to zero, which brings us to a pivotal point of our proof. Let's make a little love note here that we now want to show that the dot product of the transpose of the complex conjugate of vector v with vector v cannot be equal to zero which will then imply that lambda minus the complex conjugate of lambda equals zero, and thus lambda equals the complex conjugate of lambda, and so it is real. 
Now, if we let vector v be the vector whose components are the complex numbers a sub 1 plus b sub 1 times i, all the way through a sub n plus b sub n times i, then the complex conjugate of vector v is the vector with components a sub 1 minus b sub 1 times i, all the way to a sub n minus b sub n times i. Then taking the dot product of the transpose of the complex conjugate of vector v with vector v and simplifying the product of these components and keeping in mind that i squared is equal to negative 1, we are left with the sum of a sub 1 squared plus b sub 1 squared plus a sub 2 squared plus b sub 2 squared plus all the way up to a sub n squared plus b sub n squared, which we know cannot be equal to 0. And we know that this dot product cannot be equal to 0 since vector v cannot equal the 0 vector because it's an eigenvector. So since the dot product of the transpose of the complex conjugate of vector v with vector v cannot be equal to 0, then by default, lambda minus the complex conjugate of lambda must be equal to 0, which implies that lambda is equal to the complex conjugate of lambda, and therefore, lambda is real, which is exactly what we wanted to show. Woohoo! So we have verified officially that if matrix A is a real symmetric matrix, then the eigenvalues of matrix A must be real which completes our proof.